The Commerce Clause refers to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution, which gives Congress the power to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states. The Constitution enumerates certain powers for the federal government. Any powers that are not enumerated in the Constitution are reserved for the states via the Tenth Amendment. It is clear that the states have had enough, and they are rising up to fight back against federal tyranny. And no one can blame President Obama. We have only ourselves to blame because he's made it very clear, as has his uh, attorney general, the chief law enforcement officer in the country. They just want to do a few things uh, with gun laws, like take them away uh, in large measure. I think that the current administration in a year's time has moved farther and faster than the federal government has ever moved before. Now, does that mean there weren't abuses uh, of our Constitution and the role of federal government prior to that? I don't think so. I think this has been going on for literally decades. In, in my opinion, I think what has happened here is, you know, the American people tend to not really pay all that much attention to our government unless our government really overreaches its bounds. And so for years and years and years, the federal government has continued to step more and more into areas where they don't belong. They've, they've reached their dirty little fingers into areas where they don't belong. But what they've done to the American people is they've, they've done it or they've served it to the American people a thimble full at a time. They've, they've, they've given it to them a little bit more and a little bit more. And um, it looks like maybe when served a thimble full at a time, the American people are a lot more likely to go ahead and, and, and receive it or, or, or swallow it, so to speak. What's happened now with the, uh, with the election of President Barack Hussein Obama and the dominant control that the Democrats have both in the U.S. Senate and the U.S. Congress, the House of Representatives, um, in my assessment, in my opinion, what they've done is they've decided to go ahead and just really, instead of trying to serve up their encroachments a thimbleful at a time, they're trying to serve it to the American people in five-gallon buckets. Well, when the federal government oversteps its bounds in five-gallon buckets, the American people wake up. And the American people have awakened. The, the Patriot Uprising, what some people might call the Tea Party Movement, whatever you want to call it, I call it Patriot Uprising. When the Patriot Uprising uh, occurred, it, it, it really occurred and gained steam because the American people got fed up. They got sick and tired of, of a federal government that constantly overreaches its bounds. The federal government tells each and every one of us how many gallons of water we can have in our toilet. Uh, our founding fathers never intended for the federal or central government to have that much control over our lives. The federal government has encroached upon the very fabric of our senses with health care bills and bailout bills and with every kind of Patriot Act bill, our nation sinks lower into the pit of gloom and depression. The American people desperately want a way out, but the federal government has other plans. Paul, we've, we've all learned our lesson. From now on, we'll know better than to try to fight this sort of thing ourselves. We'll, we'll go for a sheriff. You mean from now on, the Cartwrights don't fight their own battles anymore? Is that what you're saying? From now on, whenever we get into any kind of trouble, we have to go begging for help? Not begging. It ain't begging. Well, then what is it if it isn't begging? It's asking. It's asking like other folks do when their rights are violated, Pa. It's asking folks whose sworn duty it is to uphold the law to come and help us. Pa, ain't that what you always tried to teach us? In the last 20 years, we've seen an acceleration away from our Constitution and Bill of Rights and towards absolute despotism. The John Warner Defense Authorization Act, the Patriot Acts, uh, the warrantless wiretapping, the renditions, the secret arrest, all of this is not only anti-American and completely illegal, it is textbook tyranny. It is anathema to our system of government. The Republican and Democratic parties and the treasonous, traitorous Congress have borrowed from all of the oppressive systems across the world and amalgamated them into the current system. And they paint everything they do in this patriotic glow and it's for America and it's for the children. No, it's for the private Federal Reserve System that's hijacked this country and that has committed all these crimes. It's for them to protect themselves from the people 
that they have reduced to absolute slavery. Uh, what everybody needs to know uh, in this country is the issue of state sovereignty. Uh, sovereignty, or if you're a sovereign, you have no other power above you. The states are sovereign. The key issue there is, who do you think formed the federal government? It was the 13 original states. Does anybody really think that the states formed uh, a central government that was all powerful, that could turn around and tell the states what to do? This is exactly what the Founding Fathers uh, started the Revolutionary War to prevent. They did not want another uh, king, as it were, uh, to tell them what to do all the time. We fought a war against King George III tyranny. They didn't want to bestow or award the new central government with omnipotence. Quite the contrary. The Bill of Rights was designed specifically to keep the federal government in check, to keep them um, limited in what they could do. And the Tenth Amendment basically tells the federal government, if you want to get creative, if you want to go outside your constitutional boundaries, absolutely not. If you think we forgot something, you can't do that either. Well, basically, the government in Washington has asserted, assumed powers that it constitutionally does not have and that were reserved, as the Tenth Amendment tells us, to the states. So if you're talking about states' rights, you're really talking about the claims that the states have to exercise certain kinds of power on their own without some kind of federal interference. If they want to stop the federal government, they, they have to find a vehicle. They have to find something that's couched either in law or the Constitution. And the Tenth Amendment is, is very clear about the state's ability, the state's rights, and state sovereignty uh, in stopping and curtailing the power of the federal government. So it is the tool, the legal and constitutional tool that is being used to uh, stop the federal government. Well, a right is something that you have, again, inherently, something that is part of your nature, something that you own. A privilege is something that's given to you by someone or some entity that has authority over and above you that has the ability to control you. Let me, just for the sake of the illustration, because I do like to pull up my handy dandy constitution and I don't blame anybody. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Checkmate by the people. Number two, the Tenth Amendment clearly says that the states have the rights to pass laws so long as they don't conflict with anything already in the Constitution. There's not one word in the Constitution that says Congress can do health care. Rights and privileges are opposites. And assuming that that is true and that there aren't other options, either you need permission or you don't, then a number of other things are also true. One of the corollaries is that all of your rights derive from property. I pointed out that if I walk out of the my house onto my land, I can walk back and forth on my land without asking for permission. Walking on my land is a right. Walking on my neighbor's land, on the other hand, is a privilege. And before I walk on my neighbor's land, I'm required to get permission. It's a privilege that can be revoked at a later time. We've got Dr. Edwin Vieira on the list. Uh, he's a constitutional scholar. He's argued cases before the Supreme Court. Uh, he's Harvard educated. He's written several books, including Constitutional Homeland Security. Uh, he is the definitive expert on the constitutional militia. The Constitution provides that the law shall be made by the legislative branch, carried out by the executive branch, and interpreted by a third branch of the government, the judicial branch, to make certain no law violates the Constitution. Well, the federal structure is based on division of authority and division of responsibility. The government in Washington, D.C., 
Let me call that the general government, because the federal government includes everything. The federal government is the government of Washington, D.C., the government of the states, the localities, and ultimately the people themselves. The general government is designed to deal with problems involving all of the states, international relations, war and peace, uh, regulation of commerce among the several states, uh, uniform bankruptcy legislation, coining of money so that we'll have a uniform system of money. Right? Uniformity that applies across the board. Well, what has happened is that the people in Washington, D.C. discovered that money would be a good way to gain power. And through their taxing system and their banking system, they have been able to concentrate control over money in Washington.